Good morning, friends, and welcome to Saturday, June 25th. Bar Baker starts us with, My Hope is Built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. <clears throat> when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, all blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Saturday's devotions found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Lydia Wiley Kellerman. Our scripture reading this morning is Luke 9, 51 to 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go be to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. And on their way, they entered a village, the Samaritans of the Samaritans, to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and to consume them? But he turned and rebuked them and then went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but for, let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The author can never read this text without her anger showing toward Jesus. The disciple can't pause long enough to bury his father. Doesn't discipleship include the work of burying the dead? After all, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. The author was 19 when she fell on her mom's body, weeping and clinging onto the warmth that still lingered in her skin. The dirt under her fingernails as we buried her ashes taught her more than anything else about who she wanted to be and what discipleship looked at. So yes, still part of her wants to yell at Jesus. However, stories change on the page depending on our perspective. Years have passed since I, she buried her mother, and now her life is filled with the clutter of crayons and caterpillars and children crying in the night. When she read the, reads the scripture text, she is no longer the disciple being called, but the parent who is being left behind. She looks at her four and seven-year-olds and wonder what that she would want for them at that moment. She thinks that she would want to sing out, leave my old bones and go dance along the road you were born to travel. Her prayer for her children echoes the gospel and the work that she has to do as she tends and nurtures their hearts. Trust your conscience and your discernment. Do not be afraid of risk or urgency. Do not depend on security, but put your trust in the love of Jesus and love and joy and cry for justice along the journey. And always know that there will be family and community ready to love you when the dusty roads 
lead back home. Let us pray. O oh God, let your embryonic waters flow through us as we grab one another's hands and join in the great journey of discipleship. Amen. Our closing hymn is Where He Leads Me. Where he